Currently, there are over 10 million women using prescription hormones in this country alone. The only reason that number isn't higher is that most women won't use estrogen because of the side effects. Another important fact, most women that do use it stop after a few years because of the side effects of prescription estrogen. As such, it's estimated that there are actually 80 million women that know they should be using hormone replacement therapy, but suffer rather than take the estrogen risk. Through this tape, we want to inform you that you now have a better choice. It is time for you now to take control of your own body. There is a more safe, clinically proven, less expensive, non-prescription treatment, and without harmful side effects. To explain this alternative to synthetic hormone replacement is Dr. Helen Pensanti. Dr. Pensanti, for eight years, had the largest Southern California PMS clinic and continued research into natural procedures for the treatment of menopause. She has, in the last three years, become a national voice for natural hormonal replacement therapy. Dr. Pensanti is currently seen on Doctor to Doctor weekly on the Trinity Broadcasting Network. Here now... Dr. Helen Pensanti. The question that is on most people's minds is, what is natural progesterone and should I use it? For many, many, many years, I practiced what I would call traditional medicine. I had an office, I saw patients, I wrote prescriptions for Premarin, Provera, Estrace. I gave people shots of all sorts of hormones, Estradiol and Depo-Provera and I just did the whole rigmarole of, like I call it, traditional medicine. But one of the things that happened to me along the way was that as my patient population aged and started entering into menopause, I noticed something that I thought was very frightening. As I began to write prescriptions for what I will call hormone replacement therapy, for instance, a prescription for a synthetic estrogen along with a prescription for a synthetic progesterone, and the other word for that is progestin, I noticed that my patients had a lot of side effects. The first and most glaring was weight gain. I would write the prescription and say, well, I'll see you in six months for a pap smear, and at that six-month return visit, they would come in with anywhere from a 35 to a 50-pound weight gain. This was very, very shocking to me and very upsetting to me because I have spent most of my life having a weight problem, and here I was now giving someone else the same problem that I know can cause a lot of heartbreak and tears. And so I began to have a little bit of fear about writing these prescriptions. I kept searching and searching the literature, trying to find an alternative, and they would be coming in, and mostly they would be complaining of hot flashes, night sweats, uh, depression. They would also be getting vaginal dryness so that they couldn't have sex with their husbands anymore and just not feeling like themselves. And so I kept searching and searching because I wanted to help them so badly. Well... I have a television show called Doctor to Doctor, seen across the Trinity Broadcasting Network. And from time to time, the network will have what they call Doctor's Night, and they'll bring on many, many doctors as a panel. Well, one night, I was on with a Dr. Julian Whitaker. And for those who don't know about Dr. Julian Whitaker, he is probably the most famous preventive medicine physician in the United States. His newsletter alone has 500,000 people that subscribe annually. It is the number one newsletter in the world. So you know that when Dr. Whitaker talks, people are listening. So I was sitting next to him and I said to him, Dr. Whitaker, I've got a problem. I have so many of my patients now that are aging and the baby boomers and I want to help them so badly. And every time I write a prescription for Premarin or Provera or Estrace or give them Estradiol, they gain weight, they get breast pain, 
they don't feel right, they get a water retention problem. And I said, and then what am I going to do with my patients that have um, high blood pressure where it's contraindicated to give those kinds of things? And what about people with diabetes? They can't use it either. And then I'd have patients that have migraine headaches. I don't dare write a prescription for them. What can I do? Do you know of any alternative at all? And very kindly and gently, he looked over at me and he said, well, Helen, haven't you heard about natural progesterone? And I said, no, what's that? And he kind of chuckled a little bit and put his arm around me and he said, well, let me tell you about it. And I will now relate the information that I have gleaned since that first moment of even hearing the word natural progesterone. Back in 1936, some Japanese scientists found what they called the wild Mexican yam plant. And they were experimenting and they discovered that the chemical structure of some of the extracted material was exactly identical to the female progesterone that is excreted out of our very own ovaries. Well, this was a fabulous discovery back then. And they began to play around with it, and they took it into the laboratories. And, and just as farmers want to have a better crop, and they hybrid wheat, and they hybrid the oranges, and they hybrid our tomatoes to make them redder, the pharmacologists love to hybrid natural substances to make them stronger, to make them work longer, and also they want to get a patent on them so that nobody else can sell their products. Well, they began playing around with this, and what was birthed was the birth control industry. And as you know, back in the 1950s, everybody began to go on birth control pills. Until today, it is a billion-dollar industry with probably everybody in the world knowing about it. And, you know, someone in every country of the world is on birth control pills somewhere. Well... What happened to little natural progesterone? Little natural progesterone was put on the shelf because its cousins, its synthetic cousins, were bigger and stronger and making more money. And everybody forgot about it from 1950. Well, I shouldn't say everybody. I know there's Dr. Jim Jameson's pharmaceutical house and his family. His father had been working on natural progesterone for years and years and tinkering around with it. And there have been many others very similar to him. But anyway, so then what happened? When I started practicing in 1980, the statistics for people taking hormone replacement therapy with synthetic hormones was that approximately 3 to 4% of the people would get breast cancer or uterine cancer. Now, of course, for me, that's scary enough. I wouldn't want to be of the 3% that would get sick. But when you look at the whole picture, doctors weren't really being callous towards the 3%. They were saying, well, look, 97% of women, we're doing good. These 90% of these women can actually plan their pregnancies. And so they kind of tucked away the 3 to 4% that were getting something, with also in mind that by having regular pap smears, regular mammograms, they'd be able to pick up these cancers early and there wouldn't be any deaths. So that was their thinking, that they were really doing good. But what happened was, as the years progressed and more and more statistics and more and more studies came out, by 1995, the nurses' study that they did with, oh gosh, I, I can't remember the amount of people, but I almost want to say they, they had like a half a million women that they had studied, they found out that 46% were having an increase in some kind of cancer, breast or uterine. And that was just unacceptable to me. After I read that article, I never again wrote a prescription for Premarin, Provera, Estrace. I never again gave a shot of estradiol. And I will never again, ever give anyone a synthetic hormone. Well, what's a doctor to do? I had patients coming in that were complaining of hot flashes, night sweats. They were having vaginal dryness, 
insomnia. They were up five or six times a night. And then by the time they did get to sleep, it'd be four in the morning and they'd have to get up and go through their work day exhausted. And they were coming in for help. Well, thank God I had had that encounter with Dr. Julian Whitaker. And I thank Dr. Whitaker because it changed my whole life. I, it was just as if someone had handed me a baton and I started running with it. Well, what is natural progesterone? In the beginning, I told you it is the exact chemical structure of the progesterone that is excreted out of our ovaries. Mostly today, it's made from the wild Mexican yam plant and from the soybean plant. Well, what are some of the effects that progesterone, and I say this and underline it, and I will say natural progesterone, what does it do when we ingest it or rub it on in a cream or if it's given in a shot? What does it do for our bodies? It protects against breast cysts. It helps use fat for energy and keep it off the hips. It's a natural diuretic. It's a natural antidepressant. It facilitates thyroid hormone action. It normalizes blood clotting. It increases libido, where you get a little sex drive back. It normalizes blood sugar levels. It normalizes zinc and copper levels. It restores proper cell oxygen levels. It prevents endometrial cancer. And you remember the endometrium is the lining of the uterus. And it helps prevent breast cancer and increases bone building. And speaking of bone building, this reminds me of something. Every time you go to a doctor, most of my patients would tell me that, um, especially the male doctors, and I'm sure there's some female doctors who do this, but... They want to put them on hormone therapy for life to protect their bones. And yes, it is very, very, very important that we protect our bones. The statistics for women who fall and break their hips or break their hips and fall, we don't know which comes first, the chicken or the egg, but that act of a broken bone and a fall, and then they become, you know, hospitalized, The chances of getting pneumonia and dying within three months of that accident is 50%. So doctors are looking ahead and saying, we've got to protect our patients from this disaster. It's really a disaster to have that happen to someone. It's very dangerous. You remember Ava Gabor. I'll use her as an example. Um, She fell broke her hip, ended up in the hospital, and was dead in one month. Please excuse me if you're from the Gabor family, and I'm not telling this story right, but from what I read in the papers, well, this seemed like such a shock to everybody, but what happened to her was very typical. It's a typical thing for women to fall, break their hips, get pneumonia, and die within one month, 50% of them. And so we want to protect that. And natural progesterone builds bones. Dr. John Lee, who I consider the foremost authority on natural progesterone, he's written many books and he's lectured and he's a wonderful, I've had him on my television show. He's just a fabulously um, educated man on this subject. He's been studying natural progesterones for 30, 40 years And he did studies way back when he was practicing in his office, and he took pictures of women's hands and tested their bone density. And then he put them on natural progesterone for six months, took pictures again, and then he put them on for six more months and took pictures again. And he showed in 100% of his cases, he showed that there was a 10 to 15% increase in bone density using just natural progesterone. But then he also found out the women were saying, hey, you know, my skin looks better. My breasts aren't sagging. 
my vagina feels great. It's not dry when I'm having sex. I mean, there were so many other wonderful benefits, and they are still wonderful benefits for today. Well, to sum up, I want to assure you that natural progesterone has been clinically tested and proven for more than 15 to 20 years that I know about, and probably longer. It has been proven to have no harmful side effects. In fact, I read something somewhere recently where the FDA has only gotten about 100 complaints over the last 20 years from anybody even complaining about it. It works for most women. There are some that it doesn't work for. But for, I would say, 85 to 90 percent of women who try it, they will have relief and they'll be very, very happy that they use natural progesterone. It also works on PMS as well as menopause and it will strengthen your bone for osteoporosis. You will have a 10 to 15 percent increase in bone density within the first six months of usage. And teenagers can use it too. Teenagers who have irregular periods and a little PMS, I put them on it and it works great. And believe me, their families are very, very happy. (laughs) Well, I hope this answers most of your questions. If it doesn't, you will receive, along with this tape, Natural Hormones Made Easy, a little pamphlet that I've written. And that will have a detailed discussion on estrogen, the difference between progesterone and synthetic progestin, as well as many, many of the most frequently asked questions. And again, please feel free to call us, to write to us, and ask any questions that you want or if we can help you in any way. Goodbye for now. This is Dr. Helen Pinsanti.